Hello Booktube. Well, it's far too hot to be filming videos, but seeing as we seem to be living in a permanent state of extreme heat in this country, I thought I'd better film one anyway, um, because I missed you. So I, I come to you with a, a modestly sized uh, book haul. It's the result of three recent visits to my local Oxfam. Um, so um, starting with my uh, trip last weekend, we we have um, Jane Austen on screen and edited by Gina MacDonald and Andrew F. MacDonald, uh, published by the, um, um, the Great Cambridge University Press, of course, uh, and I believe they're a uh, husband and wife writing team, uh, and it's just academic essays on Jane Austen adaptations, uh, originally published, if I didn't check this, 2003, actually, um, so it's quite old. A lot to um, which would probably um, benefit from sort of an updated edition because obviously there's been a lot of Jane Austen adaptations in the last 20 years. Well, I assume there have anyway. Um, the, I I must confess I haven't really seen many or any Jane Austen adaptations that I can remember. I I've pro possibly seen some of the Colin Firth ones and uh, of Pride and Prejudice, and I have. Start, I did start to watch um, the recent Emma adaptation, but I didn't really like it, to be honest with you. I, I, I didn't watch it all, uh, which was a big disappointment because I'm, I love Emma, the book. I, I, it's probably my favourite Jane Austen novel. So, um, But in the meantime, this is um, a nice addition to the um, uh, film shelf of, of books. Um, and next we have something which was dirt cheap. It's... Um, Goethe, selected verse with an introduction and prose translation translations by David Luke, um, published by Penguin. It's, it's got this nice sort of mar marble imitation effect for the cover. Um, it's um, a, I mean you won't be able to see this, but because the camera quality is so low, uh, I am working on that. By the way, I, I, it's not that I don't care. It's just I don't have any means of filming on, with on a higher quality device. So I'm hoping to be upgrading my phone quite soon so um, in the near future we might actually you might actually be able to um, see the books I'm holding up and might actually be able to hear me as well. Um, but in the meantime I will tr attempt to show you. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is uh, the German verse, the original verse and then you get the English prose translation at the bottom there which is what I'll be reading. Um, next up we have like in my last video, in my last book haul, uh, I showed up a book published by And Other Stories, um, an independent publisher, and it appeared to be their second, uh, the second book in their catalogue that they they published. And I wondered what the first book was, and it was um, this, uh, something called Down the Rabbit Hole by uh, uh, Juan Pablo uh, Villalobos, translated by from the original Spanish by Rosalind Harvey. Uh, this is a, a Mexican writer, born in Mexico, living in Spain at the time of publication, about 2010. Um, and it's a, a slim thing, about 70 pages. Um, and yeah, it seems really interesting. I, I did read the first couple of pages, and I was, um, and it, it it seemed very charming, and it and it grabbed my attention. So um, uh, I, I, yeah, I look forward to reading this. Um, next up is a bit of a surprise, I suppose. Um, uh, I, I had never, I was not familiar with this at all, um, the subject or the book, but uh, because it was so affordable, I just took a gamble on it and it paid off. So it's um, Windsor McKay with His Life and Art by John Kane Maker. Uh, this is a book originally published in the 80s but this is a reprint from about 2006 and um, um, Winsor McKay, uh, I didn't, I had never heard of him, I must admit, um, before this um, but he was a pioneering uh, comic strip artist for newspapers in the early 20th century and also a pioneering anima animator. Um, he he uh, probably most famous for a comic strip from which appeared in the New York Herald on a weekly basis, I believe, called uh, Little Nemo in Slumberland. 
and I'll just give you an example. Of some this is this happened to be the first page that I opened the book to when I got it home, just to look at and um, just give you an example of the absolutely gorgeous um, illustrations. I, uh, although you won't be able to make it out, I will um, uh, just check. You can see that that's the first one I read. Um, I would have liked to have gone through the comments to review, but because since you can't really see it, it wouldn't be very entertaining. Um, 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 just to give you an example of another one, this is on the title page, the frontispiece, and it's what the author deems is sort of masterpiece. Um, uh, he, um, yeah, so as I say, he was a pioneering animator as well, and he, he did one of the first, or if not the first, uh, animations uh, called Gertie the Dinosaur, and I'll link it down below, it's only five minutes long, and it's just the most charming thing I've ever seen in my life is just pure delight <laughs> um, a black and white thing he, he literally in fact to have drawn every frame um, um, from hand so um, uh, it's not in colour obviously but uh, I think there's, a, there's an advertisement for that film uh, here just at the beginning somewhere. I, thought, I thought there was <laughs> for me yeah so although the animation looks absolutely nothing like that, um, that's just a nice example. Um, so really thrilled with this. So it's I I'm probably more interested in just reading the um, the comic strips than the actual biography. Um, but I would be dipping into so it's an example of the text as well. Um, I wonder if there's um, uh, an edition available just for these sort of collected comic strips. I'd possibly be more interested in buying that reading that um, but I'm very happy to have that in the meantime and be looking through it on occasion um, so the next four are from a trip I took this morning um, so this, these two are related so first we've got uh, Robert Kudakelka I'm not really sure how you pronounce that name, but it, it, the key is, is on um, Bridget Riley, uh, the Brit British um, op artist or um, pioneer of op art, I believe it's called. Um, uh, just, these are examples of you know that kind of work. I, I don't, I'm not 100% sure why I bought these books because um, a lot of her works tend to give me migraines <laughs> just when you stare at them for too long. Um, but this is yeah, let's say uh, this guy, however you say his name, was uh, a friend of Bridget Riley's, I believe. So and the next one is um, uh, the Eyes Mind Bridget Riley collected writings, 1965 to 2009. Uh, so this is um, writings by Bridget Riley, um, not the same publisher, although a very similar book. There was also another book on Bridget Riley. Uh, they're all together in the Oxfam, so someone obviously has unloaded um, their sort of Bridget Riley collection. But I thought um, three bu three books on this or on this artist was probably pushing it. Uh, but um, possibly my next um, non-fiction read. We'll see. Um, uh, next we have, I was very surprised to find, um, Stefan Zweig, or Zweig, The World of Yesterday, uh, published by Pushkin Press, a, a, a great publisher, uh, just, they just do really beautiful books and this is no exception. Uh, this is uh, a memoir actually, he wrote sort of, originally published in 1942, so it was about in, in around Europe. In, um, before and during the beginning of World War Two, um, this is about as much as I know about it. But um, it, it's translated by um, the award-winning translator, apparently, Anthea Anf Bell, which whose name um, does ring a bell, no pun intended. But, um, although I'm not sure why. Um, uh, perhaps she's uh, um, a prominent German translator. Um, or is it translated from the Austrian? Oh dear. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure if it says, but uh, anyway, it'd be quite embarrassing. Uh, the only the only other work by Stefan Zweig I've read is his novella um, uh, Chess, um, which I read years ago and I absolutely loved. I thought it was a fantastic little book and 
not just because I love chess, the game, but it was just a brilliant book. So <laughs> um, it's been a long time since I read that, so it's probably about time to read something else uh, by him. Um, and then finally, from this morning's visit, we have um, a biography of uh, Genet uh, by Edmund White. Um, this is something more I bought, purchased more because it was uh, it wasn't particularly expensive. And it's a very nice book, so, as you can see. As, um, uh, uh, Genet is not an author I've ever read. Edmund White is not an author I've ever read. But this is now going to be on my shelf. So um, Now, finally, we have... Um, uh, well, I was a little bit naughty. So, uh, on, on Saturday last week, I saw these books. Uh, but I didn't pick them up, partly because uh, I just didn't have, have the capacity, capacity to carry them which was a poor excuse really because I could have easily just dumped some stuff in my car and quickly nipped back and, and got them but also partly because they were so cheap that I thought um, there must be something wrong because when this Oxfam has something of value they tend to um, price it uh, relative to that value and I thought well either they've completely mispriced these books or or they are just worthless, so I thought well, I'll go home and check how much they're actually worth first and they're, they're definitely worth more than um, what they're pricing them so I went I, I went back on Tuesday after work uh, in t into town just to um, see if it was still there uh, and uh, I should have called up before because um, the Oxfam was actually closed, they, they sometimes just close early or just don't open for whole day, for an entire day because just due to lack of volunteers um, but it's no problem, I was in town anyway so it, it was no problem I just, I just thought I'd check whilst I was there and then I went back on Thursday again after work um, and they were open and I thought great uh, but then I thought well the, you know, chances the books are still going to be there are just so low, I mean someone probably would have bought them on that, sat that same Saturday that I saw them uh, but no, they were all there, uh, so I, I bought them and I, I did do a little test before filming to see if I could if I could hold all of these in one go and show you, but I, I couldn't do it because it's, it's six volumes, um, and it's I won't keep you in suspense any longer. It's the history uh, of my life by um, Casanova in these uh, Longman editions. So these are the uh, the the last three volumes, there's two volumes per book, so there's 12 in total, um, and the first three, they're all different colours, just love things, they're all in pretty much perfect condition with um, uh, uh, you know, intact uh, dust jackets. Um, the f these are edited, uh, well, uh, translated by William R. Trask, I assume, uh, um, edited as well. Uh, anyway, um, I was so excited to buy these that <laughs> uh, I ended up buying um, two duplicates as well. I mean, I knew they had the full set there because um, I just checked volumes, but I failed to notice that two volumes they had um, two copies of. So I came home and checked and realised that I now have two copies of the first two volumes <laughs> so um, uh, in my defense these are in slightly uh, worse condition and, and color faded so they just did they just look like different colors on the shelf so I thought there were just more volumes um, uh, but it, it, it's no problem I'll just end up donating these back I mean I'm not not in the habit of you know keeping my receipt and going to ask for a return for money in a charity shop I'll just donate them back them you know they weren't expensive anyway um, but uh, yeah, it's me being stupid. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm, I'm not something I'm going to be reading this year. I'm pretty sure, but perhaps a reading reading project for next year. We'll see. Um, but thanks very much for watching BookTube, and I'll see you in the next one.